Austube. It's Kathy, Crafty Cat Stitcher. That's my channel name. If you're a returning visitor, welcome back. And if not, if you're the, if this is the first time you're watching, welcome. And I hope you come back many, many times again in the future. Um, today is Thursday, May 31st, 2018. Can you believe how quickly we're getting into the summer months? Wow. <laughs> So, this the May my favorite month has gone by so quickly, but it has been a good month. So can't complain, not at all. Um, so anyway, welcome, and this is video number sixteen. Um, I have, like I said, I have had a good May, and I have taken part in mania in a different way, as you might know from watching um, my previous video. Um, I decided I was going to do a mini mania and start one project per week and I did and I was successful and I think I, let's start out with my mania success. Okay, no finishes but getting very close. So what I did was I started a project on the 1st of May and then I started one every Monday of May. So total of five and the first one is um, Lizzie Kate coffee time and I chose to do but first coffee and so I'm getting there I think this is something if I sat down and really worked on it today I could get it done look at I mean all I have left to do is the top wording and some coffee beans the whole object is going to be to fit it into let's let's see what it looks like sort of Kind of. It's going to be really cool. My coffee pot trivet. Found this on eBay. I've got a T1. If you've watched previous videos, you've seen that one, but the coffee will go into this one. This idea was inspired by Michelle Bendy Stitchy. Thank you, Michelle. She had done this and I, I took her idea and I ran with it. So that'll be my second one going into a trivet. So, and then also thanks to my husband for cleaning up the trivet and taking out the weird ceramic thing that was in there. I don't even remember. It was like a, I don't even know, like Las Vegas or something. I don't So anyway, um, that was project number one. So my first Monday start was No Bees, No Honey by Birds of a Feather. And that's what it looks like. So cute. I had this one kitted up. Um... I don't even know when, but I kitted it up with all DMC <clears throat> and I'm putting it on a, uh, what looks to me like a 20 count Joe blend. I did the math. It does come out 20, 20 count. So that's where I am on this. Um, I made a mistake on this. I started stitching with two threads on 20 count and that doesn't work. It, it just doesn't work. It doesn't fit. So I took it out, did a little frogging, went back with one thread. Love it. And this one was really hard to put down. I really wanted to get that little beehive or bee scalp finished. So, but I'll work on this. It's something I like. So, okay. So then project number three out of the five is Farmhouse Christmas, Little House Needleworks. So cute. Number one. I'm going to put that over there. This is how far I got on it. So what I was doing was I would start the project on a Monday and just keep working on it till the next Monday. So again, you know, this shows how quickly I stitch or how non-quickly I stitch. So I really like this. I don't know. There's just something about this chart that it's so cute. It's I know you've seen it a million times, but I don't know. I, in that color, the the thread is Cherry Cobbler by Classic Color Works. I just love that color. So that's where I am. Got my needle minder. Okay. Number three. No. Four. 
that was three. Four. Quaker Diamonds. I finally started it after talking about it a lot. Um, this is the one that I got the fabric at um, Dime to Stitch. I'm having trouble putting things away today, or I don't know, just like being organized today, I guess. I don't know. But this is where I am. Got a little bit done. Happy with it. Um, I did a thread conversion from silks to um, over dyes, and I showed you the colors last time, and they're gorgeous. So, and it's turning out so really good. I like it a lot. So that's how far I got on that. And last is um, in the Sweet Land of Liberty book by Blackbird Designs. This is the one I said that if you like patriotic um, designs, this is the one to get. It's, it's just full of beautiful. I think there's five designs in this book. So this is what I'm working on. It's Salute to Abigail, which is just gorgeous. I'm actually working it on the suggested fabric, but with overdyed threads. And I did a little bit of changing, but the, the thing is, is that the colors I chose look a lot like the silks that were used in the original. So that's what that looks like so far. So I think I had a pretty successful stitch mania. It made me very happy. These are all designs that I would stitch anyway. Nothing that I started that I will put away and say. So these are all good things. So good stitch mania. Okay. Um... I don't have any plans to start anything new for a while. I've, I've got kind of a lot of whips. For me it is. I think I have like 15. So, You know, like about five years ago, I would have just said, oh, that's overwhelming. That's too many. <laughs> and now it's like, ooh, it's fine with me. Um, let's do a little cross-stitch rewind. Because it's... Uh, the patriotic time of the year, a lot of red, white, and blue designs being set out. I decided to show you something I stitched a while back. I don't remember when, maybe, I don't know, maybe six, seven years ago. Um, it's a sweetheart tree design. I don't know the name of it, and I can't find it. Um, it's a little, I did it to a pin cushion. I use Weeks Dye Works Independence thread. That was one of those threads that you see and you say, I want to stitch something with it, but what can you stitch with? It's so specific. It's red, white, and blue. And, you know, so very pretty, so variegated. And so you have to find the right design. I thought this was a good one. It came with little buttons, tiniest buttons in the world. So um, I stitched it up, made it into a pin cushion, got some what really kind of stiff um, sheer ribbon and ruched it and sewed it on. The back is plain and I filled it with crushed walnut shells which is kind of cool. So, um, The thread. I think it got a little faded. I keep this out and my craft room gets a little bit sunny and I think, I really think it, this took a little bit of fading. So, but it's okay. It's still pretty. I love it. I'm just going to make, I'm going to put it out with my, with my um, patriotic things. So, cross stitch rewind. Okay. Um, I just wanted to show you some the other things that I do that, really don't have anything to do with stitching, but I know a lot of a lot of you show other kinds of crafts that you do, and I'd like to show you some things that I have made. Um, but I want to start by showing you a gift that I got. <clears throat> and I know that you know the recipient. 
is my sister Sheila. It's a necklace. It's really gorgeous. It, you know what? You can't really see it if it's on me, right? <laughs> um, but it's really pretty. She did a good job on it. She did all of the wire work on it. She does a really good job with that. That is something I have not mastered. But if you see it, it looks so professional. And I'm trying to get it to focus in well, but... But she did, she, and she also chooses, she has a knack for choosing really pretty coordinating beads. So she made this for me, but I'm going to show you the kind of bead work that I like to do also. And I'm wearing one of the bracelets I made. So it's more like, it's, it's not really bead stringing and it's not wire work. It's, it's like bead weaving is what I like to do. So that's one. Okay, let's see. I'll show you some more. Here's some more. There's another one. This one's got a magnetic clasp. They're handy, but you know they do they can pop off. Here's another one that I made. A little different. Um Pick it up. Oh. There's one. Mostly bracelets. A lot of the patterns I get are online. You can find all kinds of things online. This one is really old. <laughs> I don't think I made this one like 10 years ago, but it's one of my favorites. It's just a little woven bracelet. And I know I got that pattern out of a, be a beading magazine, which is another good place for patterns for doing beading, bead work. Oh, and another one I, I really like. So, I like bracelets because they're, it's an easy, quick project, and um, you can get them done really quick. This one's one of my favorites. It's a little daisies. It's a little bracelet of daisies. And this one I should probably wear a lot more right now because it's a very summery bracelet. It's that. Um, and I also do other things. I do, this is something, you know, you take an ordinary gel pen and you make it all pretty. Why not? <laughs> There's that. Oh, and, and I think I showed this to you before, but I'm going to show you again because I know you want to see it. It's, I do these little needle cases. This one's my absolute favorite with little cranes on it. I like the gold beads on it. These are a little bit more work. They, they do take a lot, and they take really good eyesight to get all that part done on the top. Um, oh, there's another one. And one more thing. This is just a little fun thing I made. This could probably go like on a scissor fob. It's a little kitty. It's done in brick stitch. So I kind of had to teach myself that. I think I made this last year. That's just a fun little thing. Like I said, I, I probably could put this on the end of the rob. How cute would that be? Right now I have it hanging on my bulletin board. So, so that's just something I wanted to show you that I like to do, work with beads. I haven't done it in a while. I've been really into stitching lately. Um, the things that, <laughs> where I have all those lovely things is in a yarn bowl made by my husband. He does woodworking. He made me a yarn bowl. This is like, this according to him, it's just character. These little holes and things. 
piece parts of the wood that's it's just natural that's an actual hole so he likes to do things like that he does this on a lathe I don't know what kind of wood that is but I like it a lot one more thing that somebody has made for me and I'll show you this my friend Thea another sister in stitches my stitch group made one of these for each of the members of my stitch group for Christmas it's a little pin cushion it's velvet and it's got I think this is a little crown it's gorgeous it's so solid it just it feels really good it's just the nicest little thing isn't it beautiful see all those nice little things that you get from people and people take the time to make you something it's so special isn't it yeah so um, I think to, right now is a great time to talk about the giveaway Remember last video, video number 15, I talked about um, the video, the video, the giveaway for my 500 subscribers. And I said, this project bag is going to go to the lucky winner. And it's got a lot of goodies in it. And I have chosen a winner. I've, I've drawn a name and it's Linda Hartsfield. Congratulations, Linda. I will comment on your on the comment so that you'll be notified of this and just get a hold of me. I'll put my email address so you can email me with your mailing address and I'll send you this bag with let's see it's got some charts in it. Oh, there's one. There's a chart that's going to be in it. It's got some things for finishing, like that. And what else do we have in here? Oh, there's a needle minder. There's a needle minder. Oh, and a scissor fob made by me. Ah, it's got a little owl on it. So among other things, there are some other things in there, a couple charts that I showed you last time. But, and they will all be in this project bag that I made. So, Linda Hartsfield, get a hold of me, and this will be on its way to you as soon as I get your address. Congratulations. And thank you, everybody else, for entering my giveaway. I appreciate all the comments, and um, there will be another one at some point. I don't know when, but there will be. Okay. Um, last time I told you about the new sewing machine. Let's see if I can get a. I don't know. I'm not going to try not to make y'all dizzy. There it is. Oh, you can't see it real well, but that's it. Anyway, it gets a thumbs up. And I'll tell you something. It came with this. And you, anybody who sews knows what this is. It's the foot pedal. But guess what? You don't need it. I have never had a sewing machine where this was not a necessity. It has a little arrow button on it and you push the button and it sews. And so, you know, Mark says to me, well, it's probably going to be a learning curve for you to not use a foot pedal. I don't think so. I have used it for a couple of small things and I think that it's great. I love it. I when did this happen? I've been sewing for like 50 years or something, <laughs> something like that. And I, this is the, a first for me. So no foot pedal, that's a major innovation, but I like it. It, it, it does really well. It sews really well. I tried out a lot of the stitches, tried a lot, you know, I threaded it, which, you know, can be a little bit of a trial, right? <laughs> Okay, so anyway, um, yes, and now I gotta get some things to make project bags because that's what I really want to do. I want to make some of those. So, um, I've watched some new floss tubers in the past month, past couple weeks, in fact. Um, in fact, I've got four of them for you today to watch Doodlebug Stitcher. 
socks for mom, Carly, I stitch what I want, and Karen Bowen. These four floss tubers are totally different from each other. They each have something specific and um, unique to offer. Their personalities are all different, and that's what I like about floss tube. That's, that's why we go there, right? To see the different things. We can't all be the same. And um, they're all relatively new floss tubers. Um, I think each of them have a couple, at least three videos out, maybe. I'm not sure, socks for mom, I'm not sure, but go ahead and watch them. I'll put their, the names below so that you can go back and watch them. But it's really nice to support new floss tubers and welcome them to the community. So as, as I have been welcomed, so um, go take a look. So um, new stuff, not too much. Uh, I, <laughs> I saw a couple of things on um, I think I got them from Cottage Needle on Etsy. Oh, so pretty and it's, you know, so timely. Plum Street Samplers, George Martha. Oh, that cute. And also Heartstring Sampling, Slaps, that Samplery. Um, Festive Little Fobs Americana Edition. These are so Really enjoyed, I will really enjoy stitching these. Um, that's really it, except for I found a source for, and I know they're going to, I think there's a hole in this bag, for rusty jingle bells. Um, the tiny rusty jingle bells that I need for the uh, farmhouse Christmas, because I'm stitching them individually, and they will get their rusty jingle bells. I got them from Factory Direct Craft, and the prices at this place are really good. There's, they have all kinds of things, stuff for trims, they have all kinds of craft items, and they ship so fast. So, they don't sound like jingle bells, but, and they are really rusty, but they're going to do the trick. So, uh, Factory Direct Craft for your jingle bells. Um, that is, that's it for new stuff, I think. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I want to give you a tiny Rio update. Rio is the cat that we adopted. We've, she's been with us for two months now. Um, she, she's something else. She's, uh, she's doing so much better than she did when we first got her. You know, when we first got her, there's there's certain things that you don't notice till they change. Does that make sense? But she would not even make eye contact with us. And now she looks at us. You know, she, like, she she makes actual eye contact with us. And she hangs around with us more. You know, like a, like a cat. You know, like your house cat. Your little pet does. She comes downstairs and sits with us when we're watching TV. Um, and um, she's, I think she's healthier. She looks better. Her eyes are clearer. She likes to play. Laser Pointer is her favorite. <laughs> and then Catnip Mouse probably is a close second. Also, she has uh, kind of invented a little game of hide and seek where I'm the one that has to hide. <laughs> And it's, it's kind of like hide and seek with a two year old because they have to be, the places that you hide have to be sort of lame because it's, they, it can't be too complicated. But um, it involves her peeking around the corner where I'm hiding and me saying boo and she runs back to her safe spot and then I hide again. Yes, this is a game. So, you know, to see her doing that is amazing. It's almost a, a miracle. So, um, she's doing well. The only, the thing I'm very concerned about is she still has not accepted Moxie. Moxie is more of a peaceful cat. She, um, she wants to be friends or she wants to be left alone. And Rio will just go up to her and hiss still. So I'm hoping that time will take care of this. 
the, fortunately, you know, they, they're not hurting each other. There's nothing like that. So, um, you know, just, I'm just hoping for the best. It's only been two months and the change has been really miraculous. So, um, I'll let you know what's going on with her. Um, what else? Plans. Um, plans for stitching. You know, I think I want to try to get some things done. I'm going to work on the coffee time to get that done. And also, I'd like to work on my July Snowflower Diaries, Joyful World, um, the one with the little flamingos. I'd like to do that, get that, at least get some finishes. And so I think I can get that done and finished before July so I can actually put that out in the coffee time hung up. So, um, you know, I'd like to get a couple little finishes out of the way so that I can work on other things. Um, one of the things that I really liked working on was my birthday start, which I don't have with me right now. And uh, that was the Rovaris Life Tree. And I really got into stitching that. But one thing I noticed is that I need exceptionally good light to work on that because it's it's uh, 1 over 25. But for some reason, I think it's the thread. The thread is very dark. It's the dark red. 815 I think and so I need excellent light to work on that so um but I'd like to get back to that so those are really my plans um I hope that you're all doing well um and Linda Hartsfield please get in touch with me and uh as soon as I put a comment on there for you and um I'll get that sent out to you I hope you all have a good weekend. Weekend's coming up. Hope your weather's better than ours, which has been rain every day for at least a week. And sloppy, muddy lawns and all that. So I hope you have good weather and I hope that um, you have a good weekend and get a lot of stitching in and post some comments. If you feel like you have to comment or you want to comment, I love all comments. Like this video. Subscribe if you haven't. I appreciate all of my subscribers. And um, that's it. I will see you next time. Bye.